Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit Semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Landon. I'm joined by Mr. Michael Sellers. He is a CFP, and I thought today we'd do something a little bit fun. We're going to discuss bonds, how they work, uh, what are the different components of them. I think oftentimes people know in a general sense maybe what a bond is, but we're going to go a little bit more in-depth today. That's something that I love to do, do a little bit more of an educational piece. Hopefully, you'll learn something new. Uh, we're going to go through a couple different things, but uh, right off the bat, uh, what are bonds? How do they work? Well, in a general sense, a bond is essentially an IOU. So if a company needs funds, they're going to go out and they're going to issue bonds, which might have a certain amount. And so it might be a $1,000 bond. So they're saying, I need to borrow $1,000. So what happens is they, they borrow that money and they decide to pay it back with interest. But there's a lot of different terms and it can get a little confusing. Not all loans are the same. Not all interest rates are the same. Not everything pays the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to shed a little bit of light on some of these things. And one of the first terms that I think is good to know is maturity. So what is maturity with a bond? What does that mean? Is it how is it cleaning its its bedroom on time? Is it is it being responsible? What is what is maturity? Right. Maturity is actually just the life lifespan of the bond. What is what it you know, how long is it gonna take until it pays out that initial uh, amount? So if I said I'm gonna borrow twenty dollars and I'll pay you back next week that bond would have a one-week maturity. Correct. But bonds might have a, a one-year maturity or a five-year maturity or, or a 10 or 15-year, right? right? Right. Okay, great. Well, what about rating? What is what is rating when it comes to bonds? Well, credit rating, uh, I, I think of it as just like a, you know, a person would have a credit score. You know, companies have credit scores too, essentially. It's their credit rating. You know, if you're lending to Microsoft or Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. they've got good credit. I trust that they're going to pay right. me back. If you're lending to maybe a startup company, eh, it's kind of questionable. Okay, so if you walk in and you've got an 800 credit score, you're going to get a pretty good rate on that on that loan. You walk mm -hmm. in, you got a 520, they're probably going to charge you a little more, right? right? So you right. could you could make more on that bond by charging or, or by getting a bond from a lower credit rating, but it's also it's a little more risky. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. It's going to be a little bit more volatile. Okay. So what about face value? What is face value with a bond? Face value is just the original price that they set on that bond before it starts trading. Okay. So if if the company, let's say Ford, is saying, I need a bond and, and they're issuing a $30,000 bond, that face value would be $30,000. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Then what about a coupon? What is, what is a coupon? Coupon is the interest that they're going to pay you, um, pay out for lending them that money. Okay. So that's, a, that's usually a set amount. Right. It's a fixed rate. Okay. So that fixed rate is is guaranteed and that's over the life or the maturity of the bond. Correct. Okay. And then what about yield? And and here's here's my question. How is yield any different from the coupon? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Yeah. That's a good question. So yield is actually how much uh, you're going to return on your investment based on the price that you paid for the bond. So if you didn't get it necessarily at issuance, you could have paid maybe $900 on a $1,000 bond. And so the yield gets added back based on that discount that you, you bought the bond for. I see. So so what you're saying is that coupon rating, uh, what can happen is that's a set amount, mm -hmm. but the amount you pay for the bond may change depending on whether you buy it directly from the original issuer or if you go out in the secondary market. Correct. Is that, okay. Right. And then what about duration risk? What does that even mean? So it just... Typically, basically, it means the longer the duration of that bond, so the, the longer term bonds out there are more sensitive to interest rate changes. So um, as as you know, as rates go up, bond prices go down. And so if you have a one year bond, it's not going to go down quite as much as, say, if you had a 30 year bond. Right. So that that duration can have a have a risk. So you've got a, a risk standpoint from the credit rating, but you also have a risk standpoint from how long are you holding it? 
Correct. Okay. And that that's something that I think is interesting because you may have heard about the inverted yield curve and different things around that. And that is where interest rates in short-term bonds and long-term bonds, they don't respond the way they normally would. And I, I think that's something that people get confused these terms might help you have a little bit of clarity on it. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to go over the four different types of bonds. And I thought we might just kind of go back and forth and kind of hit these. First one is government bonds. Well, that's pretty straightforward. These are bonds that are issued by federal governments. Now, this is both the U.S. government. It's also foreign governments. So when you hear federal bonds, oftentimes here in the U.S., we put that hat on and we say, okay, that means it's a U.S. bond. Not necessarily. And you may have heard one of the reasons we're talking about this is there were some bonds that were issued by Russia, but they were U.S. backed bonds. And they actually tried paying them back in rubles, which is having an impact on on their own uh, default risk. Now, what, what about municipal bonds? How do those work? So municipal bonds uh, are more state and municipal uh, government bonds. So your local uh, city, county or state. Uh, mm -hmm. can issue bonds as well. And those can be more tax favored, correct? Correct, correct. If they're issued in the state that you live in, a lot of times you'll get some additional, um, uh, you know, credits tax or, or tax-free, you know, return on that, on your federal return. Now, I would like to point out, and this is something to keep in mind, if you have municipal bonds, they generally have a slightly lower rate of return. That's offset by the tax savings. But if you have it inside of a tax-favored account already, let's say it's an IRA, let's say it's a Roth account, well, then you've already got it tax-favored. So what you're doing is you're just reducing your benefit. So I, I would say if you're, if you're holding a lot of municipal bonds inside of your IRA, you may want to ask, why am I doing that? Mm -hmm. um, now, corporate bonds, these are bonds that are issued by corporations. So corporations issue bonds. I think we're, we're all familiar with Ford Motor Company. I think you mentioned Microsoft earlier. These are companies that are going out. They're issuing bonds. They're raising funds with that. Um, this, is, this, this, is to run, this is both to fund day-to-day -day operations. This can also be used to fund uh, growth and kind of down the road. But then what's the last one? The last one, Matt, is our agency bonds. So these are bonds issued by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, basically for when you go out and get a mortgage. These are the uh, government-sponsored entities that issue those type bonds. Okay. Well, and then I'd like to wrap up here by just saying there are some pros, there are some cons. What, what are the pros of buying bonds? What are the cons? Michael, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Well, well pros are general safety. If you hold the bond to maturity, you're going to get your original investment back. Okay. So that's, that's the pros. What about the downside? Well, the downside are some of the things that we discussed with uh, interest rate risk as rates go up and you needed to sell the bond before maturity, you might get a lower price on that that bond. All right. Well, you heard it here first. I hope you have a little bit more clarity in some of these terms, kind of how bonds work. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach us at our office. Uh, for Mr. Michael Sellers, I'm Matt Landon. Thanks for watching.